Every last inch of me's covered with hair. Oh, really? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, where today's little episode will teach you that not everything is A-OK -okay in Disney's fairy tale universe. Case in point, one of my personal favorites, Beauty and the Beast. Similar to a lot of the classic movies like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, Be and the Bee opens with a storybook-style preface that dumps a whole bunch of exposition on the audience, meaning the kiddies don't have to schlep through a bunch of backstory story before they get to the singing teacups and promiscuous feather duster. In it, we're treated to a story about an arrogant, shallow prince living in a castle that's visited by an old beggar woman on a cold winter's night. She's looking for a place to stay, and then tries to trade him a rose in exchange for a night out of the weather. According to the story, he turns up his nose at her rose and is so put off by how old and ugly she is that he refuses to let her in. She warns him that real beauty comes from the inside, and that he shouldn't be swayed by appearances. But he's having none of it and tells her to get lost. At that point, she changes into a beautiful sorceress and the prince sees that he's made a huge mistake. You've made a huge mistake. But his apologies come too late. In punishment for his arrogance, she turns him into the beast. So, what's the theory here? Well, along with transforming him into a monster, the sorceress also gives him the rose he rejected. Which, surprise surprise, happens to be a magical rose. It comes with a catch that it'll bloom until he turns 21. At which point he's either had to have found someone who loves him, or he'll stay a beast forever once that last petal falls. Basically the most elaborate hourglass ever. Oh, and before she goes, all the prince's employees are turned into cutlery, because of reasons. So, ashamed of his looks, and with 21 as the magic number, the beast stays locked in his castle with all his anthropomorphic household utensils. Which takes us to the point where the movie starts, and Belle stumbles in ready for some good old-fashioned Stockholm Syndrome. It's unclear how much time it's taken her to get there, until Lumiere gives it away in the song that'll be played in dinner theaters from now until eternity, Be oh. Our Guest. Oh. Ten years we've been rusting, needing so much more than dusting. So, according to the lyrics of the song, we know that they've been rusting as household appliances for ten years. But wait a minute, how does that make any sense? We know that when Belle shows up, the rose has, quote, already begun to wilt. So we're in the home stretch towards the Beast's 21st birthday. If they've been waiting for Belle for ten years, that means that when the old woman shows up at his doorstep, the prince was, at most, 11 years old. And I know what you're gonna say in the comments, but Matt Pat, those are song lyrics. They might just be hyperbolic representations of real story elements. To which I would say, wow, what an incredibly well-articulated response for the YouTube comments section. But here's my rebuttal. Beauty and the Beast is one of the best examples of a Disney movie leaning heavily on song lyrics to forward major plot elements. It's only through the songs in the movie that we learn how Belle dreams of finding more in her life, how Gaston plans to hold Belle's father hostage, and how Belle and the Beast are developing feelings for each other. Belle sings about her book reading habits, Gaston sings about his tromping in boots and his home decorating abilities. <laughs> antlers in all of my decorating. I mean, yes, this could be a metaphor, but seriously, look at the antlers he's using in his home decor. Queer eye for the straight guy, this is not. These songs aren't about metaphor. Their lyrics are meant to be taken literally. They're about providing critical information about the characters and their story. Which means Beauty and the Beast's prologue isn't talking about just a young prince, it's talking about a really young prince. So, taking a look back at the movie opening again with the prince and the old woman, we realize that the story we're being told is far different from what actually happened. The Beast didn't start as some jerky, arrogant member of a royal family. In reality, the prince, who's young enough to still be watching Power Rangers unironically, mind you, answers the door in the middle of the night. Which, as an aside, should actually fall on Cogsworth as the butler. Hashtag buttle fail. Once there, this 11-year-old boy finds a dirty old woman at the front door. She wants to come in, but he says no because, well, you know, he's a little kid who's alone in the middle of the night, and she probably stinks of urine and forest wolf or something. Those things were so scary. She offers him a rose, but he's not interested because, well, can someone say stranger danger? Don't accept candy or creepy glowing floral arrangements from strangers, kiddos. And knowing is half the battle. And when she turns into a beautiful sorceress, he apologizes because he's a nice kid who didn't mean to offend her. But the sorceress apparently has a vendetta.
vendetta, showing no leniency to a kid who is doing what all responsible young kids should have done in that situation. She curses him by making him grow up as a monster, as if puberty didn't suck enough. Oh, and because she's really a lot more evil than Disney's storybook opening would have us believe, she also happens to curse everyone else in the house, because why not? Which probably be hating on some rich folks up in this his house. Then, over the next 10 years, he hides, even more than he would as a regular teenager. During that time, he develops a grand total of zero social skills, and doesn't even know how to begin when approaching a girl, much less getting one to fall in love with him. In his state of arrested development, I've made a huge mistake. He doesn't know how to react when Belle's father shows up at the castle, and he behaves not like a rational adult, but like a petulant child, which is, surprise, surprise, exactly what he is. The Beast isn't a monster. He's not even a bad guy. He's just a little kid who never had the chance to grow up. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. And if you like that video, click the rose to subscribe. If not, I'll put a curse on you that forces you to watch nothing but Disney toy unboxing videos for the next 50 years. And if you like this one, click my theory on Harry Potter not being the only chosen one by clicking here. Or find out why the movie Shrek was a big middle finger to Disney by clicking here. Now if you'll excuse me, I have an expectorating contest with my name on it.